Hey, I'm Fireball Tim, and welcome to the first annual world-class automotive film and arts festival. So, um, this is part of a bigger picture. Yes, this is only uh, two chapters out of, so far, about ten chapters. Um, you know, a work in progress. And obviously, you know, I'm seeing it for the first time on a very big screen with big audio. That's exciting, isn't it? It is exciting, but I see all the little flaws and audio mix problems that needs to be But you're used to seeing it on, on the computer yes. at the end of my room. Yes. Yeah. So, the... Um, as with you know, most films, it's a tremendous amount of work, but uh, a question I always find interesting is that with the amount of, uh, of the length of the film, in an hour and a half or so, uh, how much footage have you actually put together to be able to gain that? Well, we've shot, I mean, over the course of probably three and a half years, we've shot probably 50 or 60 hours of interviews, because, you know, once you get these guys, and I got guys out at like Gilmore Stadium, um, just all over Los Angeles at all the tracks it used to be, and you really don't want to tell them to stop talking. Right. Uh, you know, they're explaining these cool things, or they've restored this car lovingly for, you know, 20 years, and... It's unbelievable, the passion. Yeah, exactly. So, I, you know, I just keep shooting, and then I have to crush it down into a short format. Right. And when, then there's tons of B-roll. I mean, there's hours and hours and hours of footage, and... Sure. Yeah, it just goes on and on. What uh, was your initial germ, your initial inspiration to well, for doing this? I used to work uh, on a TV show called California's Gold with Hugh Hauser, and this guy, Harold Osmer, wrote a book called Where They Raced, and uh, we did just one segment, a half hour show, on the Corona Circle, um, when they raced there from 1913 to 1916. Mm -hmm. And Harold and I would talk like every year or two, and I'd call and say, it's going to rerun, and we'd say, oh, we should really do the whole book, or he would say, so-and-so just passed away. And finally, after like five years of that, and he said, someone else just passed away, we were like, okay, let's just get a camera, right. start shooting, you know, to capture this before it disappears. Because it's literally, you know, everything's turned into a parking lot or a thrifty or a, you know, something. And, um, you know, we wanted to capture it before it was too late when you could still actually get moments and yeah. see some of the parts of the tracks that still exist. Yeah, it's really exciting because, I mean, people are driving around LA and, yeah. and have no idea. No clue whatsoever. Any of these. Yeah. Tracks exist a little in the fact that they're on the track. Yeah, my favorite one that I never knew about was uh, in Beverly Hills, like right in the middle of Rodeo Drive. It was a mile and a quarter board track, which was made out of two by fours on edge, which you wow. know, must have taken a forest to build. And Los Angeles is actually home to the first board track, what's considered the greatest board track, the Beverly Hills, and then the fastest board track, which is in Culver City. Um, and there are only 24 board tracks. On, in the whole nation, they wow. tended to, you know, catch on fire as there was lots of <laughs> oil and gas and wood. Right. Um, so they didn't last too long. But uh, how, you know, how many how many tracks were there? You know? Oh, I mean, hundreds. Hundreds. I mean, yeah. Especially when you start counting all the drag strips that opened up later and you know smaller ovals and sure. So sure. literally hundreds. Yeah. So what's your time frame now to be able to complete the film? Um. Yeah, that's a great question. <laughs> uh, you know, I hope to have it done. I had hoped to have it done, you know, by now. Right. Um, but I would say, you know, September, I'm pretty much done. I'm finishing up the Lions Drag Strip section where I had uh, Danny Thompson and uh, Judy, Mickey's first wife, were walking down the drag strip. Um, and then a little bit on uh, Turkey Night with J.C. Agajanian Jr. And that's basically done. I just have to finish editing it, and then I need to, you know, fix all the little problems that exist, and then. Uh, It'll be out there. Now you, you, you told me we were talking earlier that um, that but we did pay, pay that bug. Paid the bug extra, extra to yeah, I bathe. Um, that you are more of a storyteller than you are a car guy. Yes, I mean I've always loved cars. My grandfather was kind of a failed B-level race car driver in Italy, and then he turned into a auto importer. So he always had really cool cars and. Uh, like my first driving experience was in a, a 1973 911 uh, RS, and I thought it was going 100 miles an hour at age 11. It was, it was only 100 kilometers an hour, but uh, so I've always had that love. But 
you know, I can't tell you everything about every car and every track. It's more, you know, I'm fascinated by LA history and, you know, LA and the car grew up around each other. I mean, people talk about the red car and public transit, but the automobile really shaped the city mm -hmm. and the city really shaped the car. Right. I mean, there's so much innovation took place in Los Angeles and, you know, sure. to this day. Yeah. What, what were some of the challenges that you, you faced that, um, that were extreme that you know that might have prohibited you from being able to complete so far what you have right. i mean you know obviously budget is always the the biggest challenge we did this i got did a little kickstarter campaign uh did it work i got some money and then i got it, cleverly i actually managed to get people to give me money directly instead of kickstarter taking the 10 percent or whatever mm -hmm. which uh, helped a lot um because I've made other documentaries and I refuse to spend my own money on this. Um, so I've only spent other people's money on this, which is a good, a good plan for me. But it's taken, you know, four years since we really started. Sure, sure. You know, I'll put it away for three months and not do any work on it, or I'll just watch, you know, ten hours of weird B-roll footage that I found in someone's garage somewhere. Right, right. We, were, we had some interviews yesterday and it was... Um... Uh, a common subject about people's need to express themselves mm -hmm. through uh, some of these guys through racing, for you in particular, through a film. And uh, uh, what is it about film for you? I mean, you've done a number of movies at this point, a number of documentaries. And uh, why is it that, uh, that you keep coming back to this particular meeting? What does it do for you? I don't know. It's, I, it's, that's a good question. I'm, I, it's, just, it's the way I feel like I can express myself best. You know, I, I like to write, but I'm, I'm not a good writer. Uh, and uh, so I can tell pictures, tell stories with pictures and use other people's thoughts to help sort of stitch it all together. Mm -hmm. And I love, you know, learning about the history of places. So. Well, cinema is certainly a form of, of art in the same way that sure. paintings or sculpture and things like that. But you're, you're giving people an experience, you know. Do you guys like the film? Yeah. <laughs> That's great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, go ahead and see if any of these guys have any questions. Okay. Are you ready for that? Sure. Anybody have uh, have a question for Harry? Uh, I don't know a lot about the uh, early racing, but what I what I've read is the board track racing was very dangerous. Uh, the oil would get on the, the board, and the, a lot of cars would run right off the track, and and they, they were elevated because they were. Um, yeah, they had a high, they had a high banking um, to have let them go really, really fast, and they were all a lot of Harry Miller cars, which were you know fine-tuned machines that went, you know, yeah. they went way too fast for that era. Yeah, um, I think. I don't, the, I don't think many people realize how dangerous it was. Yeah, it was it was pretty substantially dangerous, and I think the very unstable. I think the Culver City track they ran like in the one forties, fifteen years before they did that at uh, Indy in the Indy five hundred. You know, so it was, they were ahead of the curve, as it were. Thank you. Um, did you know Big Willie? I'm sorry, who? Big Willie Robinson? Uh, not personally, no, but I know of him and what he did, and hopefully for lap two, that'll be a uh, part of it. This, this version of where they race sort of caps out around 1960 or so. Um, so it goes from 1913 to 1900? 1900 to, yeah, 1960-ish. You know, I have some really good footage of uh, Paramount Ranch, uh, so, you know, I don't know, I think I maybe got to include that. But, My favorite track. Yeah, your favorite track? It's an amazing track, but... Yeah, I'd love to revive that track. Yes. Well, I love to see anything where there's still part of the track there, it's just sort of fascinating that you can actually go and, you know, when you park at the ranger station, you actually drive down part of one of the straightaways, and, you know, I sort of love that. And Legion Ascot, which is in uh, Lincoln Heights, um, you know, sort of the the way the curve, the street curves is actually where the, the turn four was. And, you know, it's sort of amazing that you can still do that. That's and awesome. The knowing, sequel will be, where will we race? Yeah. So I think that could be your next campaign. Okay. Well, let me get this one done, and then I'll step up to that one. All right, great. All right, let's give Harry a round of applause. Fantastic film. Really Thank you.